Welcome to the worship service of St. Andrew's United Church in Sudbury, Ontario. In this challenging time of social distancing, we can stay connected. Joined by God's Spirit, we are one as the body of Christ. Please also join us for virtual fellowship time at 11.30 this Sunday morning. To get your Zoom link for the event, please contact Leslie Cassidy. Her contact information is published in our weekly news, emailed on Thursdays, and can also be found on our Facebook page. Now, let us prepare for worship together. This is a high moment in our collective life. It's the 50th anniversary of diaconal ministry for Diane Trollope, who is a special part of this St. Andrew's community. And so we light a candle to celebrate the rich ministry that Diane offers to us. It is also the 95th birthday of our United Church of Canada. Today, we all celebrate, singing and praying, and we share in a sacred meal together. But we have come through a week that makes us think. Uh, think about the power of words, the pain of violence, as well as carrying in our hearts the longing for God's dream to be real. So maybe that is the way we come to an anniversary. We remember good times, we celebrate, but we also recognize and speak of the pain and sadness and disappointments that are part of the story as well. We do not dismiss or deny the pain, in fact, even in this auspicious day, we will accompany in our prayers our sisters and brothers of color in the United States and right here at home and around our world, those who are struggling for justice. And so as we light this candle, holding vigil for all who are speaking out for justice, let us commit once again to the shared vision of a world where we stand together. For thousands of years, long before the settlers came to this land, first peoples lived on and cared for this land. We are thankful to the Creator for this land, but we also recognize Canada's colonial history and the harm we have caused to Indigenous peoples. So we acknowledge that St. Andrews, here today, we worship on the traditional territories of the Wanapate First Nation and the Atikamekshing Anishinaabek. We give thanks for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages, and we pray for and will work towards just sharing of this land and true reconciliation. So last week was the birthday of Christ's Church. This week marks the coming together of three major Canadian denominations into one United Church of Canada. Birth, now that is a wonderful image in all its forms, including the birth of new things in each of us. A new outlook in life, a new relationship, a new job, a new chapter in retirement. So I invite you to think about the aspects of your life that need transformation. The Bible offers stories often of how in the most fearful moments there was a new birth, new possibility coming. Nothing is impossible to God. We light this Christ candle to celebrate a birth 95 years ago, but also a birth of something new in you, perhaps today. As we light this candle, we pray for holy possibility to be conceived today, born anew in you and in me.
Let us pray with words that are adapted from the opening prayer of the inaugural service of the United Church of Canada on June 10th, 1925. O God, who gave us at Pentecost the gift of the Holy Spirit to an inspectant and united church 95 years ago and brought into one fold that day three denominations, grant us the hope of that same Pentecost spirit in all our life and worship, that we might aspire to great things for you, God. Unite us in your love. May we shine with Christ's love so that glory may be yours, world without end. We pray this along with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The newest version of the United Church Crest is now on our screen. The insignia is a spiritual and historic reminder of the members, uh, to the members of the United Church across Canada. How much do we know about it? How was it created? What do the symbols mean? This crest is the official signature of the United Church of Canada. It is on all legal documents and was ultimately designed by the Reverend Dr. Victor T. Mooney, who was the treasurer of the United Church at the time. And these are his own words. Shortly after 1925 Union, the executive had ordered that a seal be designed for the United Church. But no report was ever made to the executive. The committee had appointed an expert in seals for documents. Several designs were made, but they had not appealed to the committee. As Moody puts it himself, because I was always doodling in the meetings, the then moderator said, let's appoint Mooney, the chair of the new committee. He's always doodling. In 1944, Mooney's design was approved by the 11th General Council. The Latin words, at omne unum sint, found on the lower left side mean that all may be one and are taken from John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 21. I ask not only on behalf of these, 
but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. On the lower right side, we find the Mohawk phrase, Agwe na dada wa na re, something like that, which means all of my relations. This phrase connects with Jesus' prayer and reflects the spirituality of Aboriginal peoples that acknowledges our interrelationship with all of creation. With these words, we are reminded that we are both a united and a uniting church. Our United Church of Canada was the first union of churches in the world to cross historical interdenominational lines. We are also reminded by these words and from those who offered them to us that as a denomination, we seek right relationship among all people and with creation itself. I want to share with you a reading from the Gospel of John. It starts at the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the leaders of the religious community, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So we pray today, come Holy Spirit, come. Breathe into our hearts this day. Bless our celebration, but also grant us wisdom as a church called to speak peace and justice within the crucible of racism and inequity. Spirit, grant us courage and compassion. Amen. Today we celebrate the United Church of Canada 95 years young. That's not at all old, especially when compared to many denominations and faith traditions whose life spans hundreds, even thousands of years. In our short time though, we have had our conflicts, haven't we? The United Church has come of age grappling with many issues. Spiritually speaking, we faced many demons in our life uh, we struggled with our prejudice around gender issues, and I dare say we still do. But as a national church, we celebrate the gift God has given us in leaders and congregants alike who are from the LGBTQ2 plus community. We reflected with shame as we, and ultimately our moderator, uh, the Reverend Bob Smith, acknowledged to our first peoples that we confuse Western ways and culture with the depth and breadth and length and height of the gospel of Christ. We caused great harm. And we, as the United Church of Canada, work toward reconciliation with First Peoples. And we at St. Andrews do as well. Today, as we ponder mass protests in the United States and in Canada and around the world, I think that we as a church are reflecting deeply on the, challenging, uh, the challenge that's been issued to us by the black community, our sisters and brothers. An article in the June issue of the United Church of Canada magazine Broadview has Adele Halliday speaking with clarity along with other black United Church of Canada leaders. Um, and they tell us that this is a moment of truth for the United Church. We need to be faithful for communities of faith like St. Andrew's United Church and our entire denomination. It's a time to be prophetic, she challenges, a time to acknowledge anti-black racism. Even in myself, as I hear the chant, Black Lives Matter, there's a voice in me that qualifies that wants to soften it a bit. Can't we all just agree that all lives matter? Racism 
is subtle. It's deceptive. It is fearful, keeping bunkered in hiding like those disciples in that locked up room that Jesus appeared to them in the Bible story today in. Right now, on this anniversary of church union, our words must be courageous. They must be honest and they must speak love. Our actions, as Jesus taught, must be of solidarity. Let us, as a united church, prophetically demand justice. Perhaps this is a Pentecost moment of sorts for us. Anger raging among our American neighbors and in Canada, Jesus spoke peace to his friends in that upper room. He also breathed on them. Interesting. He resuscitated his despairing community that could barely breathe. Let us come of age, St. Andrews, United Churches in the Sudbury area, let us courageously name those racist systems that lay hidden in us, and let us speak and act in solidarity with our black sisters and brothers. Let us speak Christ's peace. Black lives matter. Amen. This is a day of celebration of a legacy that we inherit in this United Church of Canada of ours. Ponder your gifts that you bring today, that you bring to this world, and I invite you to connect with your gratitude for your blessings. And in recognition uh, that this time, more than ever, the church and the world needs you and needs me. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God now, if you already support St. Andrews, thank you so much for all that you do, either in your time, treasure, or talent. If you haven't, maybe you are prayerfully considering. We love having partners and would be happy to answer questions you might have. You can send us an, an email to this email address on the screen above me or go to our Facebook page, or subscribe to our weekly email newsletter by using that email address. It's creatively called The News. And find out what we are up to. And thank you for all that you do out of love, my friends.
Now, we invited you to uh, gather your elements, whatever they were. Uh, the bread could be a muffin, could be a piece of toast, could be a rice cake. Your wine could be a glass of juice, or it could be a tea, could be a coffee. I invite you to go and gather your elements now that we might make them sacred together. If you need to press the pause button, please feel free. Everyone is welcome at this table. All who seek to follow Jesus are welcome in God's kingdom. So, may God be with us. God is with us. Let us open our hearts to God. We open, we open them, them to God and to one, one another. Let us give thanks to God. It, it is, is right to give, give thanks and praise. O oh, holy wisdom of God, we praise you and give you thanks. You open wide your arms uh, for us upon the cross, becoming scandal for our sake, that even the grave could become a bed of hope for your people. Therefore, with those who are made refugees in their own land, abandoned or betrayed by friends, with those who have died alone without dignity, comfort, or hope, and with all the company of saints who have carried you in their wounds, with all those who are dehumanized because of the color of their skins, their cries for justice largely unheard. May the spirit of the living Christ call our united church coming of age to speak out for justice, reaching out to offer healing. Our voices join to praise you, saying, Holy, 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 Vulnerable God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he passed the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do it whenever you drink it. Remember me. Remembering the death and celebrating the resurrection, we await with hope the coming again of compassion justice to the earth. Holy God, we are deeply disturbed, shocked, and grieved. We struggle with the world that just seems to get worse and worse and worse. But we come to you in prayer, knowing you are with us as we pray for our city. Pray for the child who was maced. Pray for the grieving and the brokenhearted. Pray for justice. Pray for black lives to really matter. Pray for no more death. Pray that we listen. Pray that we learn. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Set our hearts on fire. Purify us, cleanse us from sin, and restore us on the path of justice, mercy, love, and peace. For you are our God. You made us in your image. You sent your son Jesus to us so that we might have life now and always. You sent your spirit to be with us forever so that we might build your reign on earth as it is in heaven. That we might fulfill the vision when all people of every nation and tribe and language come together and know you are God, and know your love and peace. We pray for that day, and we pray for our hearts to turn to you, to do justice, to love mercy, and to go humbly in your ways. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. 
Therefore, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming Christ's death until he comes. In this communion, we restore to memory and hope the broken and unremembered victims of tyranny and sin. And we long for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Come then, life-giving spirit of our God, brood over these bodily things and make us one body with Christ, that we may labor with creation to be delivered from its bondage to decay into the glorious liberty of all of the children of God. Amen. Thank you, Catherine. So I invite you now to take your bread of life that has been made sacred and your cup of blessing in Christ. You could either dip your bread or your muffin in your uh, drink, your juice, or you could take them separately. Come, God's table is ready. Let's join our voices together, singing the hymn, God Whose Almighty Word, with Bob's leadership.
Created and called to be faithful stewards, we are sent forth by our God. We will take all that is good to places of brokenness, all that is beautiful to those who live in despair. Called and commissioned to be faithful disciples, we are sent forth by Jesus, word of hope. We will follow Jesus to every place he would lead us, to every person who will bless us. Called and filled with the very breath of peace, we are sent forth by the Spirit, God's grace. We will join the Spirit in bringing life where there is fear, in offering love where, where hate, hate seeks, seeks to take hold. And now, may the peace of creation's imagination, the peace of grace's word, the peace of hope's spirit, and the deep, deep peace of God in community, holy in one, be with you this day and always. Please help me to pray our regular blessing prayer given to us by our United Church moderator, Richard Bott. Let's say it together. Creator God, help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. Hallelujah.